this is my tiny house I've been living in it for about three years and it was a um, you know a, a step up from living in a camper I had the idea to buy a travel trailer got it and then just kind of do some upgrading put a wood stove but the travel trailer that I bought ended up being rotten and I lived on a community farm where a good friend of mine um, built tiny houses so when we discovered that the trailer I bought was uh, completely rotten he kind of laughed and said well I guess you have to build a tiny house and um, then probably salvaged 80 at least 80 percent of the material in the house for free um, from Craigslist and the biggest ones was like um, demolition sites so different construction sites obviously that were throwing out the entire like all the plywood that built my house um, all of the insulation, rigid insulation, you know, designed it on a computer program with my friend uh, and he does a business called Nomadic Homes. Him and his apprentice mostly built it and I did little things like put in the insulation and, um, you know, a friend painted my floor and my other good friend who builds the houses, you know, kind of artistically I said, oh, do whatever you want and built me the ladder and then he custom built me my French doors and there's like, you know, so it's quite... Um, it's quite a put together of, you know, the uh, friend owned a um, auto recycler, so all the metal and the roofings from there and, uh, yeah. After years and years of doing these alternative dwelling tours, I have compiled the most useful list of everything that could go into a van build. This is great to look at even if you just want to spark ideas. Obviously, you don't need every single thing in here, but there's a few really essential things and it's really going to just spark some ideas for you to build out your van in the best way possible. It's also an affiliate link, so it's the best way to support this channel if you've been getting any kind of value out of these documentaries that we make and publish here. This is the best way to support us. Click the link in the description, check out the list, let us know if we are missing anything, which I really don't think we are. It is a full list of everything that you need for your van life. Now back to this episode. This is the uh, day bed, also storage pops up and there's a table in the middle and then benches on either side um you know ladder that's also shelving uh hand built by my good friend adam from nomadic homes and uh the best uh thing ever i was telling you earlier if you build one of these for yourself skylight above the bed most beautiful experience i've had yet living in a, in a house um also it's nice to have one that opens because they get quite hot um, in loft, so it's nice to have an opening one. Um, I would do more storage, so if people are building, you can. I know that most of them are like nine and a half, eight and a half to nine feet wide, but you can build them 12 feet wide, which I would have done if I had more money. Floor that's really unfortunately quite dirty, but hand painted by my lovely friend Eve from Green Haven Farm. Um, you know, it's, it's, I love finding used things. So for me, I love like rusty metal that I got from a friend's scrapyard and, you know, got this on Craigslist and it's cast iron and has spider webs, which I think is the most amazing thing ever. I really, really wanted an oven. I know some people just do the elements on the top, but for me, having an oven was key. And actually getting an oven this small is more expensive than having to get a the same with people that have the little miniature fireplaces like I don't have that but they're so expensive to get specialty things but this one's from a um, from a camper so that was actually probably the most expensive thing in this house ideally this will be solar at some point but uh, presently it's hooked in I mean I have propane but then hooked into the power and the the dream is to have a, like a bathhouse, and I did have um, a claw foot tub before, and then you could heat it up underneath, and there's a creek back here that you could have the water going in and do a whole system. So that's the that would be ideal. Just had a building a woodshed right now because getting wood for your winter time and not having a woodshed is an awful idea. Water's from a well, and I just run probably a 300 foot um, potable water line. Um, I know ideally one would bury it a foot, you know, under the ground to keep it from freezing, but I did not want to dig 300 feet of foot um, deep trench, so mine just runs on the ground. And then I have cold water, no hot water, and I, I was explaining earlier that I actually really like the 
the kind of ritual and process of boiling water to do your dishes or to wash your hair or um, yeah it's it it slows things down and I think that's one of the biggest attractions to this lifestyle is kind of more minimalism and slowing down because I'm a little bit too fast paced I think right. it's Pixie my dearest companion <laughs> So another thing for anybody who likes clothing, myself, uh, three shelves is not sufficient for all your clothes. Um, so I was, my, my car is literally an extended, it becomes like an extended part of my living. I literally carry all my camping supplies, all of like half of my clothing in there. So yeah, that's, that's the bedroom up, up yonder. And uh, funnily enough though, when you're up there and someone else is down here, you can create a lot of sense of privacy. Um, which is nice as well. Uh, I used to have a big deck off the front of here, which was, that's another thing for people that live tiny, having a big deck completely extends your living, your living situation, especially if you have it covered. I mean, that's a whole nother um, living area, but I moved and have now realized that building, building off your tiny house when you don't own, own the land is not necessarily the wisest idea. Unless you really know the people well. It all started probably when I went tree planting like seven years ago. That was my introduction to living in a tent and living in a camper. Um, and then I really, really for me, that was a transition living close to nature. I felt an un like I moved from downtown Victoria to um, where did I move up to Cumberland after tree planting and started living really close to nature and then lived in a camper doing mushroom picking and tree planting. And I was like, wow, like you can step outside and brush your teeth. And just the feeling of connection for me to nature was so important um, health wise. And obviously we recognize that, you know, the world isn't the happiest place right now, I think, because of the disconnect. So for me, that was important. Um, and then I loved being in the camper. I loved that I could go traveling and just close up my camper. I didn't have to worry about it. I could come back. Um, I love that I could move it and I only had to pay 150 bucks at the time. So then I could work two or three days a week you don't have any furniture you you can't collect things because it becomes ri just ridiculous so you're constantly having to be aware of that would you recommend this type of lifestyle to somebody yes definitely um yeah i mean i would re it helped because i lived in a camper for a while so i knew i liked it it felt it just feels so good. I mean, so many people right now, they can't find housing. You know, your landlord tells you to be quiet. You, and so finally, like, this is your own little space. It's completely yours, which is amazing. So if that's important to somebody. But I do have friends that built a t tiny house, a couple in particular, you know, and they tried it and they didn't like it. So little things like, I like going to an outhouse outside of my house. Other people don't like that. I don't mind, you know. So it depends if you're okay to give up some creature comforts. Um, also, it depends if you're living by yourself or not. I think um, it can be challenging on a couple ship unless you have some really good techniques for um, sharing small spaces. The most ideal way for me living in a tiny house is to live in a community similar to this one, but I've lived in a place before where there was one big main house where people could come in and share space and do you know music and create food together and then you you have your autonomous space that to me is ideal because it can get a little bit um i think a little bit isolating if you're just kind of out in the cabin by yourself pros and cons and i mean i've been on three different pieces of land now and lived in eco villages and the biggest thing that comes up over and over is make you you just assume that you guys are going to have certain agreements that are the same and it's it's like everything from seriously i have a heater in my house everything to i actually had someone who didn't want me burning a wood stove often to didn't want me having a guest more than two nights to so the most small like the smallest little agreements you never would think would matter to have those written up because it's really uncomfortable when you recognize that where you've just set up your house is 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 uh you know you're not on the same page as the landowner and then having to move is is easy for some but it's actually a massive hassle like for example a lot of people build decks or you know the woodshed and um these m this house is n not happy to be moved a lot like some of them are a bit more mobile but it's so interesting i go to work for 48 hours at a time in victoria and when i come back out here 
it's like such a like yeah decompress decompression and relaxation so I think that human beings across the board need more time in nature I, I like that's pretty proven um, for you know being happy and, and balanced and so um, I think it's really a beautiful way to reconnect um, with nature and kind of get back in a slower pulse of, of being which your entire like it's just de-stresses it's relaxing right I hear the creek at night time I don't even have wireless internet here um, it's um, yeah it's very peaceful and I think we're in a great need for more peace like honestly so that's that's what I gotta say that sounds a bit cliche but it's like it's incredibly peaceful yeah. to 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 come here and not only that but just the subconscious stressors that most young people face of you don't know if you get kicked out especially in Victoria you don't know the rent is ridiculous the subconscious relaxation and peacefulness that comes from knowing that you own something that you only have to pay usually 300 bucks a month that you it, it's incredibly um, assuring and it's yeah yeah and you can concentrate so much more on other aspects of life and developing your creativity and all that kind of things when you have the space to do so right